53 seconds of five production logos. Also, even though most of us hated the first one, except little kids who are stupid, the studio made enough money to bring us the second one, which will probably make enough money off stupid little kids to warn a goddamn third one. Stupid kids. I'd recognize those low register French horns anywhere. This is the Transformers music, right? Transformers, music, composer. Oh no, it's just the same composer who clearly rips himself off. Lovely. Turtle formation? I thought you said squirrel formation. This unfunny joke inside the two minute mark of this unfunny sequel should signal to the audience exactly how unfunny and unoriginal this rush job CGI fest sequel is gonna be. What's this, a generic pizza box? Was Pizza Hut not up for this again? Flipping like this with a pizza would 100% no questions asked result in what I call lasagna pizza, where the contents of the box after jostling resemble lasagna as much as they do pizza. Slow motion character introductions feel only a little bit weird considering we met all of them in the last movie, right? Oh, guys, does it get any better than this? Slung around pizza hanging above a shitty Knicks game? I'm guessing, yeah, it gets a whole lot fucking better than this. Bro, I wanna be down there. Do ya? That costs money, and all you get for it are tickets to a Knicks game. We saved this city. We should be on the Jumbotron, not in it. Well, you're also mutant turtle things that the human world isn't ready for, so there's that to consider. Also, if saving New York City got you on the Jumbotron, it would be dominated by Spider-Man, the Naked Cowboy, and Giuliani's phony earnestness. One year ago, a shadow fell over our city. My favorite part of live sporting events is when they turn out all the lights and play a video about recent terrorist activity. Sequel imagines this asshole was the only one from the previous film to find fame and success. Men's Health launched in 1987, so the 20th anniversary would have been 2007, seven years before the events of the first film. Single-handedly punch Shredder down and bring him to justice. Wait, that's the story they went with in the last movie? That this asshole did all the good stuff and the turtles were happy drug overdose hallucinations? And people believe that Ah, Megan Fox? Oh crap, he's not in range. But more importantly, what is that witchcraft technology she's using here? Are the Turtles live action movies saying Snowden was right? Discount Tyler Perry. Oh sh! that really is Tyler Perry. Quick, add five sins and let's get the hell out of here pronto. As much as I like to be someone that a girl like you would recognize. So you're saying a pretty girl shouldn't recognize a famous scientist? That's racist. No, please, geek out. I mean, every time he opens his mouth, I'm reminded how much better Jordan Peele would have been in this role. I'm a nerd, not a geek. Only a dork would say that. Less than nine minutes in, and movie finds an excuse for April to dress like she's in a horny Motley Crue video. Also, shoplifting. Bullshit elevated 3D display phone displaying bullshit information on some kind of wireless nearby downloading technology, which makes the entire exchange some motherfucking bullshit. Are they still watching the fucking basketball game? Also, fake-ass Ninja Turtles' love of pizza will now directly impact the supposedly not-fake-ass NBA game. And I'm mostly stuck wondering why they couldn't make a piece of pizza falling onto a basketball arena look more realistic. I mean, Jesus, the Twilight baby called. She'd like a realism back. No one in the entire arena noticed the falling piece of pizza until it was part of the play. Mark Cuban is currently tweeting about how lax the NBA is in setting rule precedent on pizza-related game interruptions. Also, how do you call a foul on a piece of pizza? Jump ball! You call it a jump ball, that's how. Also, given this movie's setting and relative goofiness factor, where is Coach Whoopi Goldberg or sixth man Kadeem Hardison? That was a close call! It was not remotely close, actually. You four disappeared and escaped long before anyone in the arena even thought to question anyone that was off court. I'm not even positive anyone's checking the Jumbotron's convenient cavity at all. Also, rocket skateboards in the sewer. Also, also, sewers that are 95% empty and skatable, as opposed to normal ones that are easily 50% or more filled with literal pea sh water. I always wanted to be in the Halloween parade. You totally could, and no one would realize you're an actual turtle. Just do it. Also, Halloween parade? I've lived in six states in four decades, and never once lived in a community that had a goddamn Halloween parade. And if your community does have one, just move to New Orleans and embrace Mardi Gras. Halloween parades are for amateurs and suckers. Plus five sins for reminding me of Transformers. Where do you get the fucking microphone? Do all street level performers get it? You know what? I don't give a shit. This movie is The Fugitive meets Batman Returns meets a WWE match, and I'm 100% not interested in any of that shit. What part of ninjas move in the shadows don't you understand? Judging by the previous scene, I'm guessing none of it. Super convenient computer virus tells you it's erasing your files while erasing your files. A prisoner transfer routine that requires two dozen guards with guns upon loading will somehow later be so amateur as to allow for prisoner escape. This movie's government goons are not yet proven to be good or evil, but they still travel by tailgating black SUV convoy, just to keep you guessing. Did Donnie just luck out and find a dump truck that said Tartaruga Brothers on the side? Or did he paint that there? Exactly how much gas is being wasted with these flame exhaust ports? You got 32 counts of first degree murder. And yet they're moving him in a vehicle with two guards at night. Go figure. My name is Bebop. This is Rocksteady. Giving absolutely no backstory on the fascinating still human criminals Bebop and Rocksteady. Was Bebop a musician kicked out of his new wave band and turned to a life of crime? Was Rocksteady a 19th century bare knuckle boxer who somehow traveled through time? I wanna know. I'm finished. I just wanna start a beat down. 
I always finish it! This guy's mutton chop skills are at war with his pun-making skills. The Fast and the Furious meets Street Hawk, meets that scene in Cars, meets the Dark Knight prisoner transfer scene, meets... Get them out of there! Eliminate those turtles! How does he know it's the turtles? Even if he saw the last movie, they just got this turtle-themed garbage truck as a gift a few minutes ago. Why are they still on the highway? Take an exit ramp and find the nearest police station or a garage and wait for backup. This plan has clearly failed. Abort transport mission! Get back there! Secure the prisoners! How about you try slamming on the brakes or swerving or doing literally anything to make this more difficult for this helicopter to pull Shredder out of this van? If Sensei Shredder can't make it to the extraction point, then we bring the extraction point to him. Come on, come on. Almost makes you wonder why you even set the extraction point so far away then, eh? This is awesome! It is decidedly not awesome. Shredder is about to get away. That device is part of a machine called the Arc Capacitor. What, was the name Flux of the Covenant taken? Years ago, I launched the Arc Capacitor to Earth's dimension. Krang is possessed by the Exposition Fairy. My war machine, the Technodrome! AKA the Death Star, AKA Starkiller Base. Together, we can bring the people of your planet to their knees. I'm interested. Shredder's level of naivete right here is a thing to behold. I haven't seen this level of blind trust since I told my dog we were going to the park and I got him neutered instead. Take this! It will solve all your problems with those pests. Magic Ninja Turtle defeating Gizmo of Weirdness. Also awesome. How does it work though? Who is on candle duty in the turtle's lair and how is he so goddamn on point? You can't go outside. You'll be seen. They weren't seen the last movie? Criminal known as Shredder escaped police custody last night from Lower in a Manhattan, police where he break. was serving a life sentence. Manhunt in progress with the police chief said Expositional radio montage over skyline footage. Filmmaking 101, kids. Shredder's the most notorious criminal this city has ever seen, and we had him! Discount Laura Linney is right. How incompetent is this police force anyway? Wait, that's actually Laura Linney? Get the f*** out of here. Seriously? Why is this eyewitness to the high-speed chase with Ninja Turtles involved giving his official statement in the police garage right next to his own vehicle? This is some all I care about is the visual sh here. This fool is in a windowless cubby chained to a desk sweating out every answer, not calmly chilling in front of his car like this is some kind of police-only race war set up here. You're taking some time off, Jones. I'm pulling you off the payroll. That guy was on the payroll? I can help you catch these guys. I'm from New York. I know these streets better than anyone. Right, because they won't be able to find any other qualified NYPD officers that are from New York. That's Officer Jones. And I'm gonna be a detective someday. Man, this movie turned Casey Jones into a total whiner pussy. Here's how much Michael Bay influence as a producer on this film worked its way into the actual film. I literally expected this SRT to be Bumblebee for a few seconds. Even though Casey is not allowed to work on this case, he still has the files for the escaped criminals in his car. <laughs> Casey Jones, you better watch your speed. Off the walls! <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady are f***ing stupid. These are the obviously racist tiny Autobots from Transformers 2 of this movie. Rum shake up. I see the turtles are hiding out in that one New York subway tunnel that is 10 stories tall because that's how practical subways are built. You put me in charge and Shredder slipped through our fingers. You weren't personally guarding Shredder and you helped arrest him in the first place, the last movie. So blaming yourself for this is just proof that you, Leo, have a guilt complex. As long as you keep the team unified, you shall always succeed. This was proven false by the 2007 New England Patriots. Hey, it's the Allstate Mayhem guy, which I guess excuses this entire bar from damages for the length of the film, right? Pay attention because this moves fast. This cop accused this bartender of selling cell phones to criminals. Fine, dude even admitted it. But then the cop demands the device the bartender is using to track his stolen, sold cell phones. And he has one! I mean, who sells illegal street phones but then feels compelled to keep track of them just for voyeurism's sake? No one. 100% no one. God damn. The director was like, just pretend you know how to type for a few minutes. I swear I'll make it look good. This will help open a portal to another dimension? Whatever, dude. Can we just get on with it? It needs to be synthesized. Oh, well thank heavens. Just like Batman in the 60s TV show, I actually already have a device sitting here waiting to do that very thing to this very kind of thing. Babes, I gotta get myself one of these. This Transformers character has the same nickname as a grating North American pop star. <laughs> Did he just hit both those guys with darts from a single gunshot? This man turning into a rhino somehow does not cause catastrophic damage to this all-glass laboratory. I know you're up there somewhere. Who entered Bebop and Rocksteady's names on the devices, and when? Miraculous. Inside every human, there's a dormant gene which ties us to our animal ancestors. <laughs> Fucking what? Clothes inexplicably grow and expand along with their bodies. My man! Warthog dick. April has somehow been here the whole time without any person or camera detecting her. That's an awesome escape. How the f*** did she know this would happen though? There's literally no way she could. I guess this is supposed to be an only in New York moment, but there's a woman being chased down by ninjas. Someone call the f***ing cops. <laughs> How the f*** is this not broken yet? Hockey baseball. 
What's your name? Casey Jones. Why wear a mask if you're just gonna blurt out your name to anyone that asks? Or is the film still trying to trade on the Megan Fox is so hot all men lose communication skills instantly card? Roughly seven years too late. The turtles show up to protect April. Roughly 37 seconds after the danger to her subsided, but just in time to cock block Casey, which I guess makes their entrance hilarious. Do not eat us. We are not food. This is the first thing this idiot thinks to say to four obvious humanoid ninja turtles. I know you're stretching for comedy in these films, but damn, you never go full. I'm a vegan, except for meat and cheese and eggs. This guy's definition of vegan is veganist. Donatello over there in the purple, he's a technical genius who is technically a genius. Character introductions 40 minutes after we already had character introductions. Were I to pinpoint a singular isotopic signature, I may be able to use it to track their location. This could literally be Evan Bax or Gibberish Babble and it would make just as much sense. Have, forgive me, the most pretentious names ever. Movie will not get credit for mocking the pretentiousness of the Ninja Turtles names. Movie will instead get a sin for even thinking it could get away with this sh Uh, excuse me, I named them. Yes, pretentiously when you were a precocious child. There is a giant rat back there. For someone who has lived in New York all his life, this is a pretty extreme reaction to a large rat. <laughs> giant rat one, new guy zero. Splinter could have easily explained he was a friendly mutant rat to the stranger who knows absolutely nothing about him, but instead decides to kick his ass for no reason. TCRI logo has clearly and objectively stolen from ESPN, so much so that I wonder if ESPN paid for this for some reason. Bebop and Rocksteady f***ing love CGI spaghetti, though f*** you if you think this movie is explaining that Can't say a word of this to the others. Because this is too important to God damn it. Well, I got a big bang for you. <laughs> F***ing sigh. Only one piece left to recover. That was the museum heist, a fart joke and some light stampeding. All these rotating camera tilts are about to give me seasickness. If there's even a chance that ooze can make us human. We're turtles, whether you like it or not. Somehow they are both right. Raph should care a lot less about becoming human after all this time. And Leo should care a lot more about a mysterious new purple ooze that makes radioactive giant animals into humans. Holy shit, this movie is the fifth circle of hell. What the f am I doing with my life? There's only one boat that counts in this family. Mine. It literally can't be a Ninja Turtles movie without some trumped up Leo Raph dispute, which equals boring at this point. An alarm just tripped at the Hayden Planetarium. Holy sh! Has anyone called Neo deGrasse Tyson yet? I'll volunteer. Ring ring, Dr. Tyson. A Kung Fu turtle says your planetarium has been broken into. What? No, I have not been smoking anything. Not tonight at least. Look, are you gonna help me or not? Also, the turtles have access to a bunch of notification sensors that they use to monitor, among other New York City sh a planetarium, because planetariums are always being broken into and leveraged for evil. Because Leo and Raph bicker, Leo decides to bench Raph and Michelangelo so that something terrible can happen to one of these two pairs of separated turtles. And I'm detecting traces of neutronium, the critical ingredient required for creating a controlled black hole. How the ever-loving f did a movie this abusive to science ever get permission to use the Hayden Planetarium as a location? Is the only thing capable of rupturing the space-time continuum. Oh, they weren't done! Please carry on, science turtle. I didn't realize you still had more shitting to do on the basic intellect of humanity. If a portal's gonna open up, what's coming through from the other side? My guess, Transformers. Lots and lots of Transformers. So you want to break into police headquarters? Where the f*** is Splinter right now to make scenes of absurdity like this possible? Raph inexplicably has the blueprints to police headquarters. Carmelo Anthony right back at ya. Carmelo Anthony saw LeBron in Trainwreck and said to his agent, how can I do a super sh**ty version of that? April somehow knew Vern was at this party. We were at police beat. headquarters. 30 minutes. And there's no reason at all for us to travel there together, so we'll see you there, arriving separately, for some reason. Um, police headquarters in New York City is one police plaza, and the building looks nothing like this. This is the headquarters for, like, the Gap or some sh**. Granted, this is New York City, so just saying police headquarters as a destination is a little vague, though it does suggest the main police headquarters, which this is not. What would Jack Reacher say? Well, good thing they knew a person famous enough to create this level of distraction, because otherwise this plan is dead in the water. April had to sneak in the front during a huge selfie distraction, but the turtles got in the building some other way, which also makes me wonder why April didn't go with the turtles. Also, I just realized they left Will Arnett after telling him where and when, but never once discussed the plan. He had to guess all this on his own, that he was supposed to use his fame to create a huge lobby distraction, and thank God such a stupid character was able to be so smart for a hot minute. If Mikey was just gonna hop in and use computers to approve April's license for entry, then why did we need to bring Vern into the plan? The fact that you could cut this ninja escape fight into either of the G.I. Joe movies without anyone batting an eye is not a compliment to this movie. Laura Linney's like, yep, I'm still in this piece of shit. Jade, what we just saw stays in the department. The public doesn't need to know. Okay, first of all, Jade can't help you with the dozen other cops in the room who saw that shit. Second of all, those turtles you saw are literally now running through the public, who will ultimately see them. It's just math. It is all over the police scanner. Oh hey, Splinter! Remember how you disappeared in this movie for a long time, allowing multiple shitty decisions to be made by the turtles in your absence? People fear what they do not understand.
and also six foot freak of nature kung fu turtles on the streets of New York. I got something! Ah, a tidy, you should come take a look at this cliche, though they half acidly disguised it half acidly. Apparently, Donnie has launched some sort of isotope signature tracking satellite. Otherwise, this would not only be impossible, but also some bullshit. It looks like our mutant buddies are headed to Brazil. According to this map you're looking at, they're already in Brazil and have been for a while. Bebop and Rocksteady. If I was playing a drinking game where every time Casey said Bebop and Rocksteady, I'd have a lot more fun watching this movie. That's not what happened. That footage has been altered. It's yeah, f perfectly. Jesus, a magazine cover can get caught photoshopping on today's internet. You seriously want me to believe anyone in this movie's reality is capable of altering video so that it seamlessly shows human beings doing things they didn't do without any pixels out of place? Not one pixel! Have we been told why Bebop and Rocksteady immediately became evil gophers for Shredder after being mutinized? Is the answer just reasons? Oh, sh I'm a rhino now. No one's ever made me a rhino before, so I guess I'll just do whatever this guy tells me from now on. I have the final piece and are heading back. Why did Shredder send Bebop and Rocksteady all the way to Brazil to find the last piece of the puzzle and also trust them to bring it back to New York? Thankfully for, well, basically the screenwriter and no one else, the turtle's plane from America passes directly over the henchman's plane to America, at the very same spot over the Atlantic, allowing for this aerial stunt even the Fast and the Furious deem too unbelievable. Yes, I'm adding 13 sins for this scene alone. Why 13, you ask? Well, okay then, now it's 14. Any more questions? <laughs> To what degree am I supposed to be emotionally invested in a fictional turtle's fear of heights? What would Vin Diesel do? Never ask yourself this, ever. This rhino, who used to be human, has no idea what firing a tank shell inside a flying airplane will do. Careful, as some of the items may have shifted during flight! This is a kind of witty banner that makes me think the screenwriter came up with this dialogue before writing any details regarding the plane scene, because the joke is funny even if the last 10 minutes that got us here is utter nonsense. <laughs> some bulls Damn it, I already saw the A-Team. This plane is retaining plane-like behaviors, even without a back or front. Not only does this tank still work after that horrific plane crash, but it also drives very well in river rapids. What I'd like to see is a movie from the point of view of the isolated Amazonian tribes who accidentally stumble in on this. Characters in peril about to go over a waterfall cliche. Wanted to put criminals away, not just keep them in cages. Um, what does he think putting criminals away means? It's way easier to pick a cop's pocket than you might think. Well, only if you're an average moviegoer. Otherwise, your pickpocketing was done from 12 inches away and would clearly have been noticed by your victim. Key to the city. You are the Falcon. Guy knows the Falcon has the key to the city, but no idea what the Falcon looks like. Way too many seconds of Will Arnett trying to be funny on a wheeled office chair. Yep, we're very near the finale, and this is what the movie decides to spend time on. Some Mr. Bean office bull comedy. The turtles made it out of the rainforest without being seen, found another airport, snuck onto another cargo plane that happened to be headed to New York. Galileo, Isaac Newton, Steve Jobs. This movie is really on Apple's dick. Oh, hey, we were just playing tennis and even though I'm carrying a tennis racket and my girl is not, we were definitely not having sex in Central Park just now. Hence the tennis racket in my hand. An officer goes by the name of Krang. I don't know that guy, but I hate that guy. Me too, mostly because he's arriving suddenly at the end of an already too long movie to further stretch it out. We may be the only ones who can survive around that portal. Convenient atmospheric issues are convenient. The choice is yours. When has the choice not been there, Splinter? You can't just waltz into the movie every half hour and act like you have a say in what's happening. So Raphael, who rightly complained that Leonardo didn't get everyone's opinion before making a decision, destroys the serum that would make them human without getting everyone's opinion. Oh wow, this debris is collecting itself into a Death Star. Wow. Movie that pumped fake Shredder's involvement will now free Shredder for future use later in an even more juvenile and stupid sequel. I form on that barricade! Congratulations to Jane Wu, who gets to say her very first line an hour and a half into an hour and 45 minute long movie. They all survive this. Yes, the good guys made it through, and yes, the cops were all stopped. But I'm fascinated by how and why this facility decided to position its anti-terror pylons in the shape of a 10-pin bowling configuration. Who were the ad wizards behind this shit that clearly didn't work? If I could chew a piece of gum with a face! Michelangelo would be excellent at cinema sins and also general appearance shaming. Triple X out of the shadows. I was right. It's a massive weapons system. What was it that gave it away when Krang explicitly said he was going to blow up the city and enslave the population? Krang doesn't seem to understand that he's shooting his own ship. They're dead, right? You could live a normal life. I don't think giant mutant turtles can live a normal life regardless of circumstance. It's like the movie thinks it literally earns points with you just because it contains lots of landmarks. I'm Laura Linney, and this is Masterpiece Classic. As soon as the sun goes down... Turtle time. Nitrogen bonds to oxygen, which in turn... We're gonna roll it. Everything is great! I'm doing awesome! Everything is 
Everything is awesome Everything